prepare the way. You know, I've discovered a uh, Netflix series in the last couple of years they've had it, uh, a special Christmas series about a guy who calls himself Mr. Christmas. Has anybody seen this? And he comes to people's homes and he decorates them for Christmas. So I have found a new calling. Well, an additional calling because it's only seasonal after all. I think that the trees and the garlands and the decorations are something pretty exciting. He turns one house into a gingerbread themed wonder filled with candy canes and peppermints and another house becomes a winter wonderland. It's a dream. I love to decorate for Christmas and I put my tree up this year with uh, Disney's Once Upon a Christmas playing on TV and we have even already made a gingerbread house. Mind you, I did buy that last year. So this is last year's gingerbread house we've already made. But I love to buy gifts and make tags and wrap presents. I love planning special celebrations, digging out the Christmas carol CDs, um, looking at my Spotify Christmas playlist. Preparing for Christmas is one of my favorite things to do. And I'm just getting worse every year because I collect more and more decorations. So soon, come Christmas time in our house, we will probably won't fit into the house anymore. We'll have to live next door and just have our house set up for Christmas. We just won't fit in there. I wonder if you feel prepared for Christmas, if you've put up your tree. I know I put mine up a little early. I think it was the 25th of October or something. So a few people have said to me, what? You put your tree up in October? I'm like, that's only two months till Christmas. So I think it's a bit late. Um, we're into December now, so if you haven't got your tree up, you know, there's no excuse now. Put your tree up. You've, you've, you know, you're well into December. Nobody can accuse you of going too early, okay? As Christians, you, you haven't got your Christmas tree? Oh, when you get home this afternoon, maybe. As Christians, we know that Christmas is not about the trappings. It's not about the decorations. The decorations are beautiful, but we're called to celebrate Christmas by refocusing our lives on Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. I love the line from Joy to the World that says, let every heart prepare him room. Is your heart ready for the arrival of Jesus? We have a bit of a joke in our house that's not really a joke because it's completely true, but we only tidy up when we're expecting people to come. We're only tidy up when we expect guests. So if you come to that door unexpected, expect it, the house to be a complete disaster. Um, the only reason our house is ever tidy is because we're having a meeting or expecting visitors. We tidy things up, you know. We put all the folding in the spare room. Is that what you do when you tidy up? You put all the toys, you just kind of shove them into the cupboard. You give the floor a bit of a sweep, maybe even a mop if you've got enough time. I wonder if anybody else has a spare room like ours, a room filled with all the junk that I vow to clean up at some point, but have just gone around with a basket, just picking up all the stuff off the floor, shoved it in the spare room, closed the door and gone, yes, my house is tidy. I don't know if you do that. Maybe you're more organized than me. Maybe you have a junk drawer. Maybe you don't have a whole room like we do. Maybe you've got a junk drawer or maybe it's your garage. And when you press that button and open the garage, you go, I hope the neighbors don't see this. The kitchen or dresser drawer with a bunch of batteries that might, may or may not be flat, a torch, a few screwdrivers and Allen keys, some scable, cables that don't fit anything you own anymore. You might have heard the analogy before that sometimes we let God into our hearts, but sometimes we don't want to show him our spare room stuff. We don't want to open the junk drawer. Sometimes it's because it's painful. Sometimes we're ashamed. Sometimes we haven't even owned up to the thoughts and attitudes shoved into it. In order for us to prepare this Christmas, I want to encourage you to open your heart to the Holy Spirit. Really open up even the stuff that you haven't wanted to face. Open your heart because God is in the business of transformation. We need to prepare the way of the Lord in our hearts this Christmas by allowing God to transform them. 
And we don't need to feel guilt or shame as we open that spare room door or that garage or that junk drawer. We don't need to feel guilt or shame because God has already showered us with love and compassion and forgiveness. Psalm 103 verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. Second thing we need to do this Christmas is wait. I don't mean the kind of waiting that you do in line at Coles on a Saturday afternoon or when you're waiting for a takeaway coffee when you're in need of caffeine at 2 p.m. Not that impatient waiting where you go and sit on the couch and then go and start the car while your wife is still getting ready. Not the kind of waiting where you're bored or wasting time. I mean the kind of waiting that we see in the movie Love Actually. Did I mention I like Christmas movies? Have you seen this, Love Actually? Everybody's seen it, right? The scene in the airport where loved ones are gathered in excited expectation of the arrival of their friends and family. To wait on God is not simply to mark time. Rather, it's to live in excited, confident expectation of his action on our behalf. Waiting on God is refusing to run ahead of him, trying to solve our own problems for ourselves. It's sometimes hard to wait on God when we're longing for something to change. It takes courage to wait. It takes courage to wait on God when he doesn't provide the answer we were hoping for. But waiting on God with courage involves living life with joy in the realisation that what is in front of us here and now is not the end. Even when that answer doesn't come through the way you were hoping, what is in front of us here and now is not the end. God has already intervened in human history on that very first Christmas and given us a saviour, the greatest gift of all. Waiting on God involves the expectation that we, he will transform our hearts, and he will transform the hearts of others. The third thing we need to do this Christmas time is let joy reign in our lives. There's been a lot of people struggling to find joy in the last few years. Let's be honest, it has been a hard few years. COVID kind of delayed some celebrations, hence today's celebration happening a whole year away from when it was supposed to. It's delayed family reunions. It's delayed even coming together to mourn. Still, economies have struggled and companies have suffered. Unemployment has risen. We've seen an increase in loneliness and disconnection. It's been a hard few years. And joy is sometimes difficult to find when we're faced with hardship. Only the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit can help us to have joy despite the circumstances we face. So my prayer for each of us this year, through whatever difficulties we might be facing, despite even heartbreak that some of us have had to go through, that God will replace your sorrow and mourning with joy. The joy of the Holy Spirit will dwell in you this Christmas because Christmas is ultimately about the joy of knowing that Jesus has come so that we can experience life in all its fullness and bring the joy of Christ into the lives of others, even in their most difficult moments. Sometimes during Christmas... There's this thing that happens in shopping centres, and I don't know if you've experienced it. Long lines, busy, busy people rushing from one thing to the other, trying to get presents and food and things that they need for a celebration. But it seems that they have lost the joy of Christmas because hostilities can rise, people get anxious, people are impatient, people are experiencing not what I would call the joy of Christmas, but this 
increased anxiety that comes with all the things that they might be facing. If we are people of the joy of the Lord, we can face hostility with gentleness, rudeness with kindness, derision with love. The joy of Christ can overflow through us and touch and change the hearts of those around us. So this Christmas, may we let the joy of the Lord reign in our lives. And I pray that your joy might cause others to seek the giver of joy. So as we continue to wait on God in this season of Advent, prepare the way of the Lord. Let every heart prepare him room. Prepare in expectation that God will transform, intervene, and renew your understanding of his message this Christmas. Prepare and wait with courage and let joy burst forth. We're going to take a moment right now and we're going to sit and reflect as some music plays. There's a prayer that we read in Psalm 139 and it says, Lord, search my heart and know me. Right now, sit with the hard stuff the painful stuff. God loves you in spite of it all. Lord, take my selfishness, take my doubts, take my bad attitude, take my fear, take my pride and replace it with your grace, your selflessness, your generosity, your love. Lord, let me know your joy. Let me know with certainty that you will always be with me, always love me. Your love will always win. Let's pray together. We long for you, God, to come into our world and break through, reign with compassion, justice, and peace. Both mighty and tender you come. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you. Amen. <laughs>